In this video I'm gonna show you how to make a camera that follows our player from one room to another. And also more traditional camera that follows the player movement and looks a bit ahead in the direction in which you're going. So let's go! As always you gotta have the complete project from the last episode. So if you don't either go and complete that first or just get it from GitHub. Our first step in this tutorial will be to create a new script called camera controller. Once you're done attach it to the main camera object and open it up. The purpose of the script will be to move the camera around. So first of all we want to define how fast this happens by creating a private float called speed. Next we'll need another float called current position x to tell the camera to which position to go. And finally a vector free called velocity which will be equal to vector free dot zero and I'll explain why we need it in a minute. Now let's create an update method and in here we want to change the position of the camera transform. And to achieve that I'm gonna use a method called smoothdam. If you check the documentation you're gonna see that this method is used to gradually change a vector towards a desired goal, which we will do with the camera. We will transition it from the current position to where we want it to be. So the first parameter of this method is the current position of a camera, which is just transform position. The second one is the destination and for this one I'm gonna create a new vector and give it the current position x on the x-axis and on the y and z I'm just gonna maintain the values that we have right now. The third parameter is the velocity vector that we created and this one is basically the rate of change of the position of a camera. Don't try too hard to understand this one because you don't need to modify it, just keep in mind that you need it for this to work. And the fourth and final parameter of this function is the speed of a movement, which we will multiply by time dot delta time to make it frame rate independent. And when you're done you're gonna see an error appear and that's because I forgot to put in the ref keyword before velocity. Great, we're done with this part. Now we need a method that's gonna help us change the destination of a camera. And I'm gonna call this method move to new rule. As a parameter, this method will take in a transform, which I'm gonna call underscore new room. And we're gonna take the x position of this new room and assign it to the current position x variable. So you can imagine it like this. When you play the game and you enter a new room, we're gonna take the position of that room, pass it into the camera and tell the camera to move to the center of that room basically. But before we do that, there is one important step. First of all, select a camera, then change the speed of a camera controller. If you don't do that, the camera is just not gonna move. Alright, now we need to create a way to tell our camera in which room we are. And to do that, I'm gonna create an object called door and position it right here. Now give it a box 2D collider and adjust the size of it. And also make this collider a trigger by pressing this check mark. I realize that I didn't show this in the video and that's completely my bad, but please press it before you move on, otherwise it's not gonna work. The next step is to create a new script called door and attach it to the door object. Now open it up and create two transform variables in here. One called previous room and another one called next room. Now go back into Unity, select the door and into the previous room field drag in room1 object. Now duplicate room1, move it to the right change its name to room 2 and delete the left wall so you can walk into it. Now you can select the door from room 1 again and into the next room field just drag in room 2 object. Alright, back to coding. We're also gonna need a camera controller reference so we can call the methods from there and a non-trigger enter 2D method so we can detect the collisions with the player. Once you have that you can create an if statement inside that's gonna check if the object that we collided with has the tag equal to player. If we know that's the case we need to know from which direction the player is coming from. So we're gonna check if the player's x position is smaller than the door's x position. If that's true we know that the player is coming from the left and we can tell the camera to move to the next room which is on the right. If that's false we know that the player is coming from the right this time and the camera needs to go to the previous room. Great, now go back into Unity, select the door and add a rigid body 2D component to it. Also make its body type be kinematic because we don't want the door to move. Next select the camera and make sure that the speed is not zero. And now the player and make sure to assign it the player tag. Open the camera controller script and remove the multiplication by time dot delta time. This is a bit of a mess up on my part, but I experimented with it and I noticed that it works better without this value. And select the main camera again and tone down the speed to something like 0.5. And finally it's done. As you can see the camera transitions to the right room and it's working pretty smoothly. But our player flipped over. 
That happened because I was moving too fast, but let's make sure that doesn't happen again in the future. Go back into Unity, select a player object and in the rigid body 2D component freeze the rotation on the Z axis. And now when you play the player is not gonna flip over, I can guarantee that. So if this is the type of a camera that you want to use in your game, this is the end of the tutorial. But if you want to see how to create a more traditional camera that follows your player around, keep watching. First of all, I'm gonna put a couple comments to know which code is responsible for the room camera movement. Then I'm gonna comment out the code from the update. Now let's create the variables that we need to follow the player. First of all, we're gonna need a reference to the player's transform because that's the object we want to be following. Now, inside the update method, let's say that the position of the camera is going to be equal to a new vector 3, and we're going to use the player's x position for the x axis, and keep the camera's position on y and z unchanged. If you want your camera to also follow your player on the y and z axis, you can just pass in player position that y and player position that z accordingly. All right, now you can go back into Unity, select the main camera, and drag in the player object into the player field. Now if you press play and try to test it, you're gonna see that the camera follows the player immediately, with no delays, and also that the player is right in the middle of the camera. And what we actually want is the camera to look forward a bit in the direction in which we're going. So let's create a couple new variables. First one is a head distance, which is gonna allow us to tweak how far the camera is able to look forward. And the second one is camera speed, which is obviously the speed with which the camera will go forward. We already have a speed variable that this one is gonna have a different value, so that's why I made a new one. And finally a private float called look ahead, which we're not gonna serialize. Now inside the update method we want to add the look ahead value to the player position.x. Now immediately on the next row we want to assign the value of look ahead. And we're gonna use the lerp method to gradually change the value of look ahead from an initial value to a final one. And the initial value here is just gonna be the value of look ahead itself. And to get the final value we're gonna multiply the ahead distance by player local scale.x. So imagine that your ahead distance is something like 2. When your player is facing right, its local scale on the x-axis is 1. So when you multiply these two, you obviously get a value of 2. So what happens in this case is the look ahead value is gonna change gradually from 0 to 2. So when your player will be going right, the camera will take the position of a player on the x-axis and add this look ahead value, which is gonna make it look a bit forward in that direction. But when your player is facing left, its scale will actually be minus 1, which will give you a total value of minus 2. So the camera's X position will actually be smaller than the player's X position. Which finally means that the camera will move more to the left when you are facing the left direction. I hope this is clear enough, let's continue. And the final argument here will be time.delta time multiplied by camera speed. And yes, this time we will actually need time.delta time. Alright, that should do it. Let's move back into Unity, choose the main camera and assign all the values. And now you can finally press play and see how this works in action. You can see that in my case an ahead distance of 2 wasn't really noticeable and the camera speed of 0.5 was also too low, so I had to increase both. 5 and 2 works much better for me, but this is very subjective, so it's up to you to play with the values and find whatever you like the most. In the next episode we're gonna implement a health system and a trap so we can actually kill the player, then in the future we can reuse this health system for the enemies as well. Thanks a lot for watching, make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss the next episode and that's it, go make some games now.